Welcome to the Security Speakeasy Show, where we talk about all things network security. In this episode, we'll talk why securing IOMT devices is hard and what some of the HTOs or healthcare delivery organizations are doing today to protect those IoT devices. My name is Minakshi Segal, and I'm on the product marketing team here at Palo Alto Networks. Joining me today is Mark Beck, uh, who has over 15 years of experience in the healthcare space. His most recent role um, has been healthcare security architect, supporting healthcare vertical sales and customer uh, support globally. So welcome, Mark. Hi, Minakshi. Glad to be here. So uh, Mark, my first question to you. So it seems that you know medical IoT or those medical IOMT, Internet of Medical Things, is one of the most talked about cybersecurity uh, topics today. So in your opinion or in your observation, why do you think, why is, why is the case? Yes, uh, the topic of protecting connected medical devices and the hospital networks that they run on have certainly been at the top of mind uh, for most healthcare organizations for the past two, three years. Um, but these connected devices are nothing really new uh, and they have been around for a while now. I remember working with a lab equipment as early as 2008 that had a network connection for storing large files over the network and other devices that leverage the network for authentication, for example. So connected medical devices and the security risks that they carry are really nothing new to the industry. But uh, as we see more and more devices leveraging network and inter internet connectivity to really meet the demands of modern patient care uh, focused on improving outcomes and efficiency, um, healthcare organizations started to associate device security risks to patient safety, as many of these devices can directly or indirectly impact patients. And of course, uh, the risks that um, may impact patient safety is something that the board and the hospital executives can understand much easier than other cybersecurity risks or issues that healthcare organizations deal with today. So there is a natural heightened awareness around medical devices. So I think the focus on not only medical devices, uh, but also the entire ecosystem of IoT security will continue for some time. You know, th that makes sense. Uh, recently, I was reading an article. I think there was some report and uh, some of the analysts were talking about that 80% of healthcare organizations, IoT devices were targeted with cyber attacks in recent years. And uh, there was another report by Gartner. They said that 25% attacks in hospitals involve IoT. So this is scary uh, number and a trend. Um, uh, so Mark, my next question. So why is it so difficult to properly secure these devices and the network that they connect to? Uh, great question, uh, Minoxi. As you know, uh, there are many reasons why, I would say, um, um, that makes it difficult to protect these medical devices and the, connect, uh, uh, and the hospital networks that they connect to. But I would say, uh, you know, shared ownership and multiple stakeholders managing these devices is where the challenge really begins. Historically, medical devices are managed by the hospital's biomed or cl clinical engineering teams, and not necessarily IT. These groups own the lifecycle management of these devices uh, from onboarding to offboarding, whether they are connected to the network or not. And then you have the vendors or the manufacturers that perform most of the maintenance task or the upgrades and so on. In most cases, access to the OS layer of these devices are not provided to hospital IT, um, or the devices are running embedded OSs. So uh, vendors are usually a major part or player in, in the maintenance cycle. And then you have the hospital IT that mainly is focused and responsible for providing connectivity and configuring the device and the network so that they work properly. And lastly, you have your security team that's focused on ensuring security of those devices. So you have a number of different stakeholders involved uh, that makes it difficult to coordinate efforts sometimes. Also, because these devices often are not easy, or in some cases, uh, 
impossible to patch to address security flaws. They are often seen as the easier targets to compromise and get a foothold uh, of the hospital networks by the attackers. And because many of these devices are patient facing and can impact patient safety, as I mentioned, there's a heightened sensitivity around causing interruptions to patient care operations uh, that really makes the maintenance and any type of active services to address these uh, flaws and issues really difficult. Uh, not only can compromised medical devices harm patients directly by applying inaccurate you know, dosage of medication or exposing them to unwanted amount of radiation, for example, a compromised medical device producing inaccurate data that may later be used to make treatment options by the uh, doctors can also cause harm to the patient. And not too many organizations have traditionally monitored activities from these devices. And in the past, the you know, conventional security and network tools are not really designed to identify and profile these devices, let alone understand these device behaviors. So vulnerable devices that are not really monitored um, make them an enticing target for the attackers to compromise uh, these devices and even move laterally to other high value targets in the hospital network. And the lack of internal segmentation in most hospital networks allow these attacks to prop, you know, propagate easily across their network. This is quite insightful, you know, so you kind of span across, you know, network security issues, security with the, um, uh, the devices themselves and, and also the kind of risk that they bring to the patients. So this brings me to the last question of the episode, Mark. So what are hospital organizations um, doing today to protect these um, uh, IOMT devices and also to enhance their security posture? Yeah, so what I'm seeing from the field and you know, also based on my personal experience working in the provider space is that their number one goal is to improve visibility because many of these uh, organizations have challenges identifying all of these medical devices and other connected devices that are plugged into the network. So uh, inventory, enriching the data that they have on inventory, uh, identifying these devices, profiling uh, these devices, and also um, partnering with different stakeholders, as I mentioned, you know, uh, to create a better process around the inventory, the maintenance, onboarding, offboarding, the whole entire lifecycle management. And also proactively working with vendors to respond to potential problems early and requiring suppliers and manufacturers to meet certain security guidelines for them to do business with them to start with. And contractually uh, setting clear expectations around efforts to maintain and improve the security posture of these devices. And lastly, uh, we also see a number of institutions that are investing in, in IoT security tools. Um, what these tools enable your organizations to do is really minimize all these manual efforts that I just talked about, uh, which make it difficult to sustain a program or scale out. So IoT tools or security tools help automate many of these tasks and help organizations be able to sustain those programs, uh, whether that be connected medical device security or the IoT security program. And adopting you know, industry best practices to improve their foundational security and overall security posture, such as zero trust, internal network segmentation, as I talked about, is another uh, approach that hospital organizations are using today. Right. Um, so thank you so much, Mark, for your insightful observation and sharing them with our wider audience. So for the audience wanting to know more about today's IoT threat landscape, I recommend reading our uh, Unit 42 IoT uh, threat report. So the report also talks about you know, which IoT devices are most susceptible to compromise and, and next steps you can uh, take to immediately reduce IoT risk in your environment. Thank you all for joining this episode and uh, see you in the next episode.